Hi, this is Eddie Jackson Jr. and this is Real True Street Crimes. This is my product, a CBD product, ISA T. I use it after I work out in the morning and it curbs my appetite and keep me from being hungry and eating too much through the day. So it's an excellent product. You put it in a bottle of cold water, you shake it up, then you drink it. It's an excellent product to try. Another one of my products I'd love you to try is these Harmony Drops. It's an excellent product. I put two drops on my tongue, wait for 60 seconds, swallow, and then I smoke a joint pretty much after, okay? It's a wonderful product. That's the way I use it. It is a CBD product. Give it a look at on my link. I have a lot of other products. I have cleansing, a lot of products on my link. Now, this is Eddie Jackson Jr., Real True Street Crimes. And today, I'm going to tell you a story about when my father, the fat man, came home from jail. The first person that was running with us was Huckabuck. As soon as he seen my father, he didn't leave our side. Huckabuck was with us all the way, okay? Huckabuck used to love to gamble at this joint called Stokes on John Iron Oakens, on John Iron and Ushkin. Stokes had the spot that my Uncle Willie had after my Uncle Willie let it, left it and moved to 3875 on John I and Erskine, a little green and white house. So we knew the house all our life. Now, this, once again, is my cousin Freddie on the far end right here. This is my cousin Freddie, okay? This is Cousin Freddie on the far end. That's Freddie, my cousin, for life since I was a kid. He used to live in the Jeffrey Projects. And my Aunt Ox was an excellent cook. And on the weekends, I'd want to stay down there with Freddie, you know, in the Jeffrey Projects. So my mother would let me, you know, because she never thought we was better than nobody else. Sure, you spend a night in Jeffrey Projects if you want with Freddie. So we spent a night with Freddie. Naturally, we all smoking weed, getting high. He got us over at Jumbo's, which is the whole bar on Selden and Second. Boy, I can tell you some stories about Freddie and cussing them hoes out, them hustles, them hoes cussing Freddie back out. That shit used to be so goddamn funny. Boy, I can tell you some stories, but this particular story, Freddie was not getting high as far as smoking crack or anything. We were smoking hash and weed, and he was drinking 40 ounces. A motherfucking old English eight ball, okay? Now, at this time, Freddie worked for this guy, best in the world, okay? This is who was handling the bag in the Jeffrey Projects at the time, a nigga called Best in the World, okay? Now, Best in the World hung out at Stokes as well as Huckabuck, okay? Now, Best in the World said something to Huckabuck about my father. Huckabuck came back and told my father what best in the world had said. Okay? My father waited until dark. He said, we're on our way down to Stokes' on John Iron Erskine. He grabbed his double barrel shotgun, put one double off buck, one slug. He grabbed the riot pump, had me loaded, one double off bug, one slug, and Huckabuck grabbed the Coke 40, Coke 45. We went down to Stokes's. Whatever the fuck best in the world said about my father to Huckabuck, we on our motherfucking way to Stokes all the way loaded up, you understand, for game. Now, we get to Stokes. My father tell Huck, he gave Huckabuck 5000 He said, Huck, go in there and gamble and tell uh, best in the world to come out. I want to talk to him. Huck go in there and they gambling and Huck look over at Bess. He said, Bess, Eddie's outside and he want to talk to you. Bess say, what? Huck say, Eddie is outside and he wants to talk to you. Best in the world. Now he know the shit he done said to Huck and he figured Huck done set him up for the kill, which what had happened. So best in the world tell Huck, tell Eddie I'm not coming out there 
with that bullshit. Okay? Now, outside waiting for best in the world is my father with a double off barrel shotgun waiting to motherfucking blow his ass in the hell. Best in the world, that was the best decision you ever made in your life. If you wanted to see another day. You understand? Because whatever the fuck you said to Huckabuck while y'all was at Stokes' is gambling pissed my motherfucking father off so bad, I ain't never seen him do this for no other man while I was with him. Motherfucking best in the world had my father finna tear his goddamn ass apart. Now he got him trapped in Stokes talking all that shit to Huck and wouldn't even come out. So Huck came, I'm told daddy, he said, you know, go on daddy with that bull, Eddie, go on with that bullshit because I'm not coming out. So my father sent Huck back in. He said, Huck, you tell him I'll be out here waiting for him when he come out. I ain't coming in, but I goddamn be for sure waiting on whatever motherfucking dough he come out. When he come out, tell him I'll be waiting for him. Huck went back in and delivered the motherfucking message. This is all night. This shit started about 2.30 in the morning. Now, it's about 5.30, getting, going to getting bright. You understand? Pops was said, Huck, go in there and tell that nigga one more time. Come on out here like a motherfucking man since he talking that motherfucking shit and face me. Huck went in there and told him, he said, Eddie, he said he ain't coming out. He don't care what you say. He said, this nigga ain't coming out. You got this motherfucker trapped in the closet in here, man, shaking and trembling. Now, best in the world is supposed to be this show enough killer-ass nigga that'll kill you if you look at him. This is what my father said best in the world's reputation was. So I guess he thought Eddie Jackson was scared of him. So now Eddie Jackson got this motherfucker trapped in Stokes' is on John Iron Erkson in there trembling like a goddamn bitch. So the sun came up, got light. i never forget it. We was driving a white and blue motherfucking 98. Oldsmobile 98. We all got in the car and we pulled off and said, that motherfucker gonna be scared to death. That come out of he probably stay in there for the rest of his goddamn life. We laughed at that punk motherfucker best in the world and never did hear nothing else about his punk ass. Because if he had a came out there that night, he would have been destroyed, Mr. Killer. Come on out with whatever the fuck weapons you got. Because what the fuck we got for you, you, I don't give a fuck what you got. Come on out. You in Stoke, come on out. Come on out. God damn it, since you got so much shit to talk and so much to say, Bring your punk ass on out. Like, subscribe, share. Look at my link. Give me a play if you can. Thank you to all my subscribers. And this is one about best in the world. This Jeffrey Project nigga. Well, he was running the Jeffreys, I guess, because my cousin Freddie was working for him. So then I went and told Freddie the next day. I said, Freddie... You know, he went down there to twist your bitch ass boy best, don't you? He said, What, Eddie? I said, Nigga, we went down to Stokes to motherfucking blow your motherfucking boy ass in two. Since you say he's so bad, that's who you work for. My father sent you a message. If the motherfucker had a came out that night, I guarantee you wouldn't have worked for him again. I went and told my cousin Freddie all about that shit, Freddie, because Freddie loved all that gangster shit he used to. DJ Killer, boy, that you jack a motherfucker, ain't he? I said, DJ Killer, jack a motherfucker. Peace, love, share, like. I got way more stories coming at you. Look at my link. Thank you to all my subscribers. Love, I'm out.